business, we will from the CW resolutions we'll bring it up. <coughs> she wouldn't need a signature on that O dot form. Well, I wasn't. I think it only needs two signatures. Um, and I wasn't here during that time, so it only has two slots. That's just this and there's a third one. Alright, but you only need two there? No, there's three. You gotta have three on there. And this is a certification done every year? Yes, this is a formality we do every year. You usually see this first thing in the year. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the next resolution we will talk about was the uh, the uh, fire truck, and I don't believe we need to do that. We discussed that in the work session. We admitted at that point in time that the decision has already been made. We already signed the paperwork. We don't need to sign this resolution, do we? Well, that's what he needs. You need the resolution, right? Yeah, if you wrote, I think one of the, the documents asked for the resolution date and all that. So. Okay, so you do want to sign this? Okay. Yeah, but is this the resolution no, this the that one. Tracy wanted? Yeah, that's the one I want. Okay. That's not the one he wants. Okay. I got to find out which, do you know what that resolution number was? Is it in the, is it in the previous the exhibit paper? Exhibit A, it would have been exhibit A. Well, that, that's the purchase resolution that we did back in. Would that have been in the previous October, resolution? Or? I mean, would that have been in the previous um, paperwork though? Would that data be in there so I can find it to fill it in? Cause I got to put it in there. Do you remember? I haven't looked at the paper. Uh, we signed the paperwork October the 19th, so that time frame, whatever the resolution that meeting. This is this this resolution here is the one I wanted to. You know, in legal said it's okay to do it in the I wanted to. When time comes, it'll be. It's a resolution 21-081. Oh, eight one. Oh, eight one. What you need? I, I guess that's if that's what you said. Then I'll put it there. Well, looking at it, yeah. The October nineteenth. If the Township Board of Trustees do hereby agree to engage in a financial agreement with leasing two to purchase finance the new twenty twenty one engine tanker. Twenty one dash oh eight one day. What day? October nineteenth. Now this, now you want you wanted this resolution because we're we're basically making purchasing decisions on future appropriations, right? right. Okay, but again, it's kind of overkill that Peterson signed off on it, but we have in our purchase agreement or the lease due agreement a non appropriations clause. So if we lose funding. We have an out. It's well, I, standard Ohio law. My thing is, is that it needs to also be known that we we need to control our um, purchases. That we have this, we want to purchase this vehicle, and we got a budget in our budget. Any other vehicles we purchase, so you guys got to remember that this has to be part of that. And we got a payment schedule now, um, so we know what that amount is. And that's that's my point of doing this. So when you got to come up and say we need whatever it may be, a vehicle, remember that you still have this one, even though we don't have it yet. And that's the point of me doing so you this. this. Yeah. So uh, the resolution 22-015, the Jefferson Township Board of Trustees do hereby agree to engage in a financial agreement with Lease 2 Incorporated to finance the new Stuffin 2021 engine tank. Whereas the Board of Trustees accept the proposal of Stuffin Corporation to manufacture a new 2021 engine tanker, whereas the Board of Trustees of Jefferson Township selected the financial package from Leasing 2 Incorporated to fund this project, whereas acceptance of the financial agreement for Stuffin engine tanker will require an expenditure in 2023 or 2024, which cannot be budgeted at this time. 
Therefore, we resolve that the Board of Trustees for Jefferson Township hereby pledge to properly budget and encumber whatever township monies will be required to fulfill the township obligations under this financial agreement and all approved past financial agreements currently obligated and approved by the Board of Trustees for future. I'd like to make a, like to make a motion we adopt resolution 22-015. Questions, comments. Roll call, please, Tracy. Trustee McGuire. Yes. Trustee Bat. Yes. Trustee McGuire. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. So you just needed the um, date? Yes, on Exhibit C, uh, line 4, it says there's a date to be put there as July of 2023. So that includes right now. Exhibit C? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, per public record uh, for the agenda, the next resolution on there was to transfer some funds to operate within the budget. And communicating with the fiscal officer, uh, that money will, money will be moved around in the budget meetings that we had in the next several weeks. So, that resolution uh, will not be discussed, tabled, or anything. So, the next thing is departmental reports. Looks so like we don't have a zoning department, or we do not have a code, code department here. And I am on the road department, so I'll take the road department. Uh, took the road department over, and uh, we had a first snowfall, and uh, I kind of got blindsided. Um, that won't happen again. Um, I, we, we were not ready for the snow. We got left. Um, some stuff that needed repairs and not were not kept up and we will be making an effort to start to track what equipment conditions are in what repairs we make uh, from basic oil changes to everything you know, I call it a blue book that goes with the equipment I'm sure the fire department does it on the fire equipment we can start doing that in the road department and um, just need to make some changes in the road department um, we've got a great bunch of guys there I'm real happy with what, what, what I'm seeing being done, but um, there's always room for improvement. So, uh, but we handle the snow, uh, you can call them, they come in, we take care of it. We know we, we just had uh, over 100 tons of salt delivered. Uh, we were back in with the county. We did have salt delivered to Diamondville Road, and uh, we have permission to go in there. So, if you, the, the dump trucks are out on the west side of the township. They don't have to go all the way back to Union Road to consult. Um, we have permission to use their wash bays. Uh, we are working well with our neighbors. And um, we will continue to do that. And that will help us all summer from doing road repairs, trimming trees, being good with our neighbors. We help them, they help us. 
the road department will improve. Uh, once you get a budget established, uh, we're going to start to see some road improvements in this township. Uh, I've seen a lot of catch basins that need work, and we can do a lot of work in house, do it ourselves. And uh, small patches, you know, on the mini excavator, we will, we will cut those out, we will dig them out, and we will do those patches ourselves. So uh, I'm very happy to be back on the road department, and we are moving in the right direction for Jefferson Township. Thank you. Next department, I have yes. A question. So, with the road department, do we have a uh, ongoing list of what needs to be done at the development site yet? No, we do not. We okay. just had no inventory. And I'll give that to you. I'll give that to you. You do that inventory list. No, we're still working on that. Um, uh, okay, so I started off on maintenance stuff first. Mm -hmm. What equipment needs what, mm -hmm. and then then we'll step out and look at. You're asking what. Uh, like what projects in the township we address, like their, uh, uh, this well, road might need to repair or get this COVID, and prioritize and what jobs yes. need to be done so that we have a rolling list because there's no reason we should never well, have anything to do on the road department. C correct. <laughs> and, and, and in that list, um, I think things get divided up in that what we can do with our own monies and what do we have to look for grants? You know, how big is this project? We, we can't pile, we can't pay a mile of road ourselves. No. So that's going to play an influence in what we do. And uh, there's a lot of small things that I think that have been ignored. Catch basins really pop out of me. You're driving the, you're driving the roads, you're driving to the plats, and catch basins are falling in, catch, catch basins don't work. The hoses, the, the things that I've seen in these catch basins, they need they need work. We can do that ourselves. Right, and right. Make a big improvement in this township. Right. I kind of just just kind of have the mindset that we need to uh, start preparing so we can put these things on the list so we can budget yes. next year and say next year we're going to do this well, project. Well, and, and, and let's and let's open up. Um, you ever seen it? So. Several years back, we hired a company, uh, Choice One. They gave us a, uh, oh, thank you. They gave us a uh, road rating. They rated all the roads. Mm -hmm. And of course, the top one of the list is a gravel road. I think it's called Jenkins or Jens. They just looked at uh, on a firm, we just looked at 35. That was that was a bad one. And then that one, then we can repair that one ourselves. Mm -hmm. We just created, we just put gravel down in the cemetery. We can, we can gravel that road and, and grade that off. Uh, you know, rent a skid steer or whatever. But uh, use that. So there again, what roads are the worst? What right. we need? What funding is available? And but yes, we need to start looking at that. And my last thing is, I did get a call from a resident about um, when the and I know we just kind of you just got started on the road. Is when we put the salt down. Yes. There were some certain spots. It was like. Block site, <clears throat> um, and then uh, Mr. Uh, Hicks called, and it was a lot of salt. It's actually a lot in front of our house, but it's like certain areas, where, like it's a lot of salt. It, and uh, so, uh, so over the <coughs> yes, and, and the one the control light is the 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 Dodge it has the control is bad in the Dodge, okay. and maybe that's something we need to. What are those? What are those units cost? And uh, for instance, the connections, in my, in my opinion, when we do those connections, we need to solder the connections. So you have connections, and I've had to go out and as you're salting, I'm not putting any salt. Why? So you go back and you look, and something's messed up, and you wiggle the wires, and it, it starts working again. So in, in making those connections, uh, just, you don't just use a wire. Bed. You put those together, you solder them. There's ways to do that so you are weatherproof in the back of that truck where you're getting all the moisture and all the elements. But yes, we're having, the, the, the Dodge especially, we're having issues with proper flow of salt. Oh. Zero to a lot. Yes. That kind of thing. So yes, that's something we need to look at. Yes. Thank you. Any other comments, people, or questions? Okay, uh, so next one. Fire department, you're up next. Uh, everybody's got um, a sheet of paper, uh, questions from Mr. Back um, about the fire department, 
and you'll find on there um, three firefighters, two firefighters and one paramedic. Um, one has resigned as a lieutenant, but he's staying on. One is on leave until May the 16th due to school, and another is on six month leave because of work and family obligations. They're all three great people. At least we didn't lose anybody. Uh, number two, the safer grab. We did not go after the safer grab this year. Updates on the fire trucks. Engine 62 was sent to the Dayton Fire Garage to be repaired. Was picked up today, brought to station 60, and had equipment put back on it. It's back in service. Yes. How long was it out of service? <clears throat> How long was it out of service? Just during the morning. Oh, okay. I thought maybe that was a long time. Okay. No. No uh, updates on 59. The restroom has been completed and okayed by the Montgomery County Building Department. Uh, working, on, working with the Building Department on the walls for the bunk rooms. Um, they get no permit for that. They say we have to have a permit. Overhead doors need adjusted or repaired. Um, all four of them is in a strain when it goes up. The tracks need lubricated. And the new heaters in the Bay Areas are great. Uh, fire department budgeting issues, concerns. I have no concerns yet. Uh, we're just operating on a temporary budget right now. Chief, can I ask you, so can you tell me how the safer grant fell through so that next time we don't miss out on any grants like that? I don't know, because I know that at one point it was like some, some grant writer and I'm kind of like. We applied for a safer grant last year and the company we had at that time um, told Steve and I um, in a meeting he didn't think that we needed the safer grant. So the new company we have now, uh, Canton, Ohio, um, the lady's name is Dee. She's great. Uh, she's got a lot of good ideas for us. But to say for granted, we was too late for that. And um, um, and Dee is the grant writer, right? What? Dee is the grant writer. Yes. Okay. Uh, Lisa has talked to Dee about getting some EMS equipment on grants, mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, I'm going to be talking to her the next couple weeks to see what we can do about obtaining uh, a grant for six people, full-time people. The government's going to be paying for it. But she's a very nice lady, very knowledgeable, and she usually answers the phone when she's home and her kids are there. <laughs> That's good. So we have, how many trucks do we have um, running now? Fire engine. We, yeah, fire engine. We have two at station 60 and one at station 59. The uh, station 59, um, those walls, boy, that's the way that's done, you're going to have a hard time getting an occupancy permit in there, correct? Because the walls are not, I mean, you have to go away to the ceiling to be fire protected. I'm really kind of leaning towards the fact that we take those walls back down uh, and just put some kind of
kind of a temporary lined up to protect yourself uh, when you get out of bed in the morning or whatever, but uh, I think we're going to have a real hard time getting occupancy per bed with the walls, with the way those walls are installed. They split on the lights, they split over the heat duct, they, each room has, now that you put a wall up, you made that a room. So that room has to have its own light and it has to have its, there's, there's different requirements that are now required because you've made that an individual room with a door. And those requirements not being met, and it's going to be very expensive for the fire department to get in the position where we can make those legal. Uh, I think it'd be just a lot better to go back the way it was, take those walls out. You still have the Murphy beds and put up some kind of a short blind there so the guys have a little bit of a uh, visual protection. And put some put the privacy walls up. Yes. You know, it goes up about six feet. That way they have some yes. privacy, yes. especially the females. But is that going to give us enough separation, having a male and female in the same space? Because that was part of the reason why we had to have separate sitting quarters. Well, in 60, we've, we've got that, and there, there's no problem. Because when we have a lot of people stay at night, then the women try to stay in one bunk room and sometimes there's a lady in with the guys. At 60? Yeah. In 59, that first room to the right, there's some beds in there. Is that a legal sleeping room? That is the lieutenant's office. Yes, okay. it is. So could we have a, could you split the sexes up in that room if you had to in 59? We had two beds in there one time. Yeah. They took the bed, one bed out, and took it up to 60. So we have another bed, so people don't have to sleep in the recliner. I personally do it myself. Yeah. Uh, well, what do you think about taking the walls back down? We got a penny in them. We got them from a uh, tanning bed. The doors are new. Did they can save the doors. Oh, yeah. oh yes. Okay. Might be able to use them for something else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can take that down. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank You're you. welcome, man. Um, before we go to the chair, I will do his report next. But I did have a question. So I, I, I thought we were talking the resolutions, and then I see two resolutions here that you gave me, Chief. Um, we need back once we get done with uh, the sheriff's department. You go back and address these two resolutions. You want to talk about these? Mm -hmm. Okay. Captain Flag, you're up. Thank you, sir. For uh, December 2021, our overall crime decreased by 11 percent over 2020. Part one violent crime was up 30 percent. Part one property was down 35 percent. Part two violent crimes increased by 19, and part two property crimes decreased by 27. Uh, the neighborhoods between U.S. 35 Derby, State Route 4, and Infirmary had six misdemeanor offenses reported, including some domestic, runaway juvenile, criminal damaging of property. Uh, several similar incidents were reported along State Route 4. Uh, the areas from U.S. 35 South to Dayton Liberty and between Union Road and Infirmary accounted for the most activity, with incidents ranging from felonious assault, domestic violence, and drug-related charges. Uh, back in October and November, we had a community concern raised about a house in the 100 block of Calumet. Um, crews have continued to work on that by monitoring the uh, foot traffic in and around that area. They've been stopping and FIN people. Um, we've had ARC out there numerous times to uh, deal with dogs at large, and uh, the individuals at that residence were excited for the offenses. <coughs> we continue to address speed related complaints in the area of Fall Trim Blair with Derby. Uh, through increased patrol. We've had uh, numerous hours over the last couple of months for uh, high visibility enforcement over time from the federal branch uh, devoted to uh, those areas and along four and along US 35, which is typically our higher areas for crashes. And we've continued to deploy the speed trailer down to those areas. Uh, some of our incidents on December 10th, a search warrant was conducted on a residence in the 100 block of Calumet Lane. Uh, that was in conjunction with a felonious assault offense, and we were contacted by an individual who uh, alleged that he was shot at by the homeowner. 
at that location over a disagreement um, that ended up uh, resulting in a search warrant being conducted on the location and uh, a couple arrests being made out of there. Um, and we've recovered some evidence uh, to support the felonious assault, but uh, the victim uh, later stopped cooperating, so that's not going to go anywhere. On December 16, 2021, our second watch, Jefferson and West Cruz responded to a weapons complaint in the 2500 block of South Union. Um, this is a bunch of individuals that knew each other. Uh, they were having a uh, rather large disagreement. Um, a knife was involved, but it sounds like the knife was involved to slash a tire on a vehicle. That vehicle allegedly attempted to run the guy with the knife over. Um, we, uh, we refereed it the best we could. Um, some charges were being presented to the prosecutor. Uh, some charges were taken, and some trespass notices were issued for a uh, couple different venues on multiple parties involved in that. Um, no serious injuries. I think the seri most serious injury out of that incident was a sprained ankle. On uh, December 18th, uh, myself and a couple deputies from uh, Jefferson Township, D7, participated in the community health fair, held at Dixon Church. We staffed the table and passed out some MCSO-related materials and such. And during the month of December, Jefferson Township investigated nine crashes. It was an increase of four crashes, or 80 percent, over December of 2020. Five property damage, three minor injury, with only three people injured, so it was just the occupants of the vehicle and one serious injury crash. Um, three crashes involved hit and run, no pedestrians, and no suspected impairment. Monday, Wednesdays, Thursdays were the busiest day of the month for counting for two crashes each, and failure to make a reasonable control was the most common causative factor we cited for, uh, with uh, three crashes being cited out for that. Um, US 35 was the most prevalent roadway, counting for three crashes. Again, three hit and runs reporting, reported during the month, which are under investigation by the uh, deputies assigned out here. 61 total traffic stops, 25 citations overall, five for moving violations and 20 for non-moving uh, violations. Had two new dumping complaints for December that's been handled by the environmental enforcement deputies. 707 calls for service, 160 reports generated, 27 forensic services calls, Nine felony arrests, ten misdemeanor arrests, again, 61 traffic stops. Uh, checked on 32 alarms, handled 22 domestic-related incidents. Uh, checked on 44 suspicious persons, vehicles, or situations. Nine theft complaints, three weapons complaints, 24 welfare checks. Um, just a couple things that uh, have come up that have been somewhat high profile in the last few weeks. We had an individual that was uh, stealing mail from uh, locations around Iona, Calumet, over onto the Trotwood side of things, um, stole a significant amount of mail. Uh, we were able to catch up with her uh, in, the, in the act and take her into custody a couple weeks ago. Um, those are going to be presented to, uh, we, we, we touched base with the feds, they're not going to pursue them, but we are going to uh, <coughs> take those with state charges through, and present those to uh, common police and see if we can get them accepted. Um, we did have two robberies of individuals, Uber and Uber Eats, on January 23rd, uh, related to the Olive Hills apartment complex. Um, the juveniles that were suspected in that are in custody as a result of uh, two later uh, robberies that were attempted in the city of Dayton. Um, and then on uh, Wednesday, January 26th, we were dispatched to a shooting at the Canine Club. We had an individual that was uh, shot by another individual. It sounds like this is going to be, upon talking to the detective yesterday, uh, more related to the barber shop in that complex than it is the actual bar establishment itself. And it sounds like it's probably between known parties. So um, we're continuing to follow up on that. And that's all I have. And then Tracy, I said that stuff to you while I was sitting here. So if you don't uh, have everything you need, just let me know. Thank you, Councilman. You're welcome. Trustee McLaughlin, I got something before you can go off on those other reports. Yes. Did 
she's covered a lot of it. I'm, I won't go over my report there, but the main thing I'm concerned about is the estimate on the back last page there. Uh, this was accepted August 18th of last year. The uh, key fobs that we have all around the, all the buildings, the uh, door readers, uh, was uh, funded by, was it CARES Act, Ms. Edwards? I'm sorry. The key fobs, the door of yes. CARES Act, okay. <laughs> well, we were short uh, four um, readers and doors, and they ended up being left off at Station 59. Now, if you're talking about reactivating that station, getting crews down there, uh, we do need those put in. It was approved by us, by the township, August 18th, but it was never acted upon. So this is the current estimate. Um, I believe it's the same estimate. I don't think it went up any. But they are four to six weeks out on scheduling. Being four to six weeks? Four to six weeks once you get on the go-ahead. Well, actually, we gave the go-ahead in August, so I don't know what will happen. But uh, I don't know if they want paid up front or at least a PO guaranteeing payment. But with that dollar amount, uh, that's, that's above what I can authorize. So I want to make sure you guys want to proceed with this if you have to do a motion or something to get it going. Um, I've got several deals from HSO right now. Uh, that'd be the training that the, ten, the trustees yes. and I attended is one, yes. and then the upgrade at the server was another, but this is a third one. This okay. is to get those readers in. And how long did you say they're out? Four to six weeks, when he told me today. And this is going to be shared three. No. <clears throat> this would, well, I'm. I would assume it's all in the fire station. Oh, it's all in the fire station. Yeah. So the other two are not. Well, at least the, the training should be split three, three, three. No, this yes, those, those other two invoices are third. Yes. This is an estimate. Who um, wants a PO for the game started, right? Right. Well, it's already been. It was. How was it approved back on August eighteenth? Do you remember? No. I, again, uh, I was. I wasn't even involved in this back. Okay. But when I just got these invoices sent to me, I asked about that, about that rewarding down there. He said it was approved, accepted, the proposal was yeah, accepted. Are you, are you okay with this in your budget?